I'm seeing some really strange shit down here. What the fuck? Now that I've had time to fully blast my way through Outriders, it's time for our final review. So first off, thanks for your patience. Now, People Can Fly's gritty, blood and guts take on the co-op looter shooter RPG genre definitely delivers great action that's kicked up a notch by impressive sci-fi superpowers, some cool world design, and a pretty satisfying loot grind. At the same time, an occasionally clunky interface, some persistent bugs, and a messy story make it seem less like a big-budget science fiction epic and more like a guilty pleasure sci-fi channel original series. Outrider's story makes decent use of its recognizable sci-fi tropes for when deep space colonization goes wrong, but the script often takes its grim, dark self too seriously. Dialogue and voice acting bounce between being so hard-boiled it's borderline camp and just being downright cringeworthy. Sounds crazy. Good thing I like crazy. And that can sure undermine the few moments that could have evoked some genuine empathy. You must have lost people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then. That said, the overarching story in Unexpectedly Hostile Alien World is interesting enough to keep things moving, and there are some genuinely intriguing twists as it progresses, even if their payoffs are somewhat underwhelming. Outriders is at its best when you're blasting your way through hordes of bad guys with a couple of friends. Gunfights are frenzied affairs that leave battlefields literally coated with blood, and there's something morbidly hilarious about seeing a whole-ass ribcage rolling through a skirmish like a bony tumbleweed. What's particularly impressive is that even though you'll likely outgrow its cover mechanics as you progress, this delightfully chaotic action is just as entertaining at the third level as it is at the 30th. Sure, the combat scenarios become fairly repetitive, especially after you've played more than a few of Outriders' endgame challenge missions that follow its 30-odd hour campaign, but the combination of sadistically gratifying superpowers and destructive weaponry makes sure that it's always good fun, and doubly so when you're with friends. I genuinely can't remember the last game that could make me cackle as hard as when my earthbending devastator combos a gravity leap with the trickster stasis bubble. Like, just look at that! Each of the four classes has strengths, weaknesses, and skill sets familiar to class-based action games. Though while there are a few skills and equipables that allow for some team healing and buffs, here they're all primarily focused on dealing damage. That uniform focus on damage output may be a turnoff for anyone who really loves to play a capital S support class, but the fact that any class can reduce the opposition to a sticky red paste allows everybody to safely go it alone if they want. Though I'll say again that it is far more enjoyable to gun down hordes of monsters and space bandits with friends. Human enemies you'll face are fairly limited, ranging from run-of-the-mill riflemen to rushing berserkers, but they provide enough tactical variety to demand some quick thinking and strategy. Of course, we're not alone. As you explore more of the planet's interesting and diverse wilderness, Outriders trots out some really cool monsters. From the variations on fodder-level mutants to the larger beasts that look like somehow even grosser and meaner takes on something out of Half-Life, the encounters designed around them are fun shakeups from the rain of bullets you find against human enemies. What's unfortunate is that despite the cool designs, the capital B boss battles are some of the least engaging fights Outriders has to offer. That five-story tall street shark looks awesome, but the whole shoot the big thing outside the arena and avoid being smashed by its hand concept feels a little played out. Similarly, while some of the endgame missions do a fun job of tying up loose storylines, others just feel like harder reskins of earlier boss fights, and that's rather anticlimactic after you've spent an additional 10 or 15 post-credit hours grinding up your gear level to reach them. The stuff that falls out when you kill those guys doesn't exactly revolutionize the loot grind, but it at least offers some great looking options. Notable inclusions like the double gun or legendary tier weapons that look like they're carved out of some monster's ribcage give the otherwise mostly standard assortment of weapons some flavor. Not to mention what are easily my favorite video game shotguns since Doom. But the real good stuff comes as you find and build better gear. The crafting system simplifies the process of modding your gear compared to other loot-heavy adventures I could name, and the variety of easy-to-swap mods offers a lot of flexibility to adjusting your build. Granted, the loot grind can be a bit frustrating if you're trying to blitz your way through it, but the level of customization on hand as you progress is a tinkerer's dream come true. Basic armor mods, for example, provide buffs to your active abilities. You might boost the damage of your trickster's temporal blade, or make it so your devastator can turn two bad guys into shish kebabs instead of one. Higher level gear lets you add higher tier mods to your library rather than having to build them individually, as well as gear with multiple slots. That allows you to do things like take a gun that explodes frozen enemies into icy shrapnel for AoE damage and add cryo rounds so it 
freezes them and blows them up in one go. Or pair a gun that regenerates your health in every kill with an armor mod that gives you bonus damage when you heal. But what's frustrating about this system is that because I was routinely changing up my gear set as I progressed, I constantly had to return to base camp to fiddle with my mod loadout. You can't do that on the go, and the crafting UI is not great. Outriders is far from the only game to have this issue, but it's still frustrating to constantly bounce back and forth between the crafting menu and your inventory screen for lack of a decent sort compare function, especially with a mandatory NPC interaction in between every single time. This can be especially irksome when you run into progress choke points. Finding better gear requires playing on the highest available world tier, which are Outriders' 15 difficulty levels. The catch is that you lose tier XP needed to unlock the next one every time you die. So you have to either play tediously slowly if you're constantly optimizing your build, or lower the world tier at the cost of loot quality. This eventually became less of an issue for me, but making that jump from tier 6 to tier 7 took forever. It's also less frustrating once you reach Outriders' endgame since all the necessary merchants end up in one place, though it's replaced by having to constantly juggle resource and currency types by jumping between your inventory, then to a vendor, then to another vendor after that, and then back to your crafting station to upgrade your gear. And once you do reach the point in the endgame where semi-regular legendary drops occur, the cost to upgrade or improve your preferred gear is high enough to require its own grind for disposable loot. Thankfully, I found a build that let me punch well above my weight class to grab better drops, but not everyone's gonna be so lucky. Outriders also has its fair share of technical issues. From bizarre idiosyncrasies like cutscenes for opening doors or an unfortunately laborious fast travel system, to some more troublesome persistent bugs. Enemies are often able to shoot through cover, abilities occasionally don't work properly, weapon and armor mods sometimes just turn off, and crashes are still semi-frequent. Now those can be annoying, but I am glad to see that the most egregious issues seem to be behind us. Servers are mostly stable, and the nasty bug that was wiping out people's inventories has, as of this review, apparently been patched out. If, if you see him, you gotta tell him I have nothing to do with this. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Outriders offers some genuinely great sci-fi action, alongside some really interesting world and creature design that I'd love to see more of. Its mostly satisfying take on RPG loop progression is well worth putting up with a lackluster story, a few clunky interfaces, and some lingering technical issues. Outriders is the good kind of grind, especially if you're into gooifying your enemies with a couple of friends. For more on Outriders, check out our cross-platform performance review or our Outriders guide for tips on crafting and what to do once you reach the endgame. For everything else, stick with IGN.